Hello everyone and welcome to another Stukent Expert Session. My name is Ian Fabiano and today we're excited to bring on Kirk Williams to teach us about Google Shopping Ads. Kirk is the founder of Zato Marketing. It's a marketing agency that specializes in shopping ads for Google and Bing. And he's also a popular writer and speaker on search marketing. He's been named one of the top five most influential people in pay-per-click advertising. Today, Kirk is going to teach us about the ins and outs of shopping ads and how online stores can use them to boost their sales. So without further ado, Kirk, I'll turn the time over to you. All right, thank you. It is uh, really a privilege to get to speak to you on, on shopping ads. Um, they're one of my personal favorite aspects of, of search engine marketing as you're going through and learning uh, all of these different things in, in digital marketing. Um, so today we're going to look at, at shopping ads and, and what they are and, and how to create them. And my objective is to kind of take you on this kind of this right from the beginning if you've never ever heard of a shopping ad before, like how to set those up. And then um, even, if, even if you're doing a little bit with shopping ads or you're familiar with them, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have some, some good strategies um, and, and a few more advanced tips as well that can help you. So I think, I think this will be a, a good time for you. My name is Kirk Williams, um, and uh, I'd, I'd love to connect with you on, on Twitter. I own Zato, we're a search and social marketing agency, and I, I enjoy just speaking, writing, um, all things PPC, and uh, really looking forward to presenting to you today on shopping ads. So as we get into shopping ads, kind of the uh, big picture overall view, like what is what is shopping ads in in, in, uh, in kind of the, the the let's let's call it the philosophical view, all right? Um, well, th well, think of automation, right? Think of some sort of feed automation. So, like, what is happening here is that you are taking some sort of product information um, from your e-commerce business. So, all of your products, you're taking all of that information. You have to add it to some sort of feed, some sort of spreadsheet, and then you need to push that up to either AdWords or Bing ads, that's gonna be the marketing platform, and then that's where you'll actually do things like setting your bids, determining where those are gonna show, and then that's actually going to show to the consumer. So that's basically like the, the big picture, what shopping ads are. Um, I apologize if, if you're already asleep, but I promise uh, it, it really is kind of fun and exciting, right? Um, I, I think shopping ads are, are awesome, um, and we're going to cover four aspects of those uh, throughout this session here. So kind of the four key aspects is we're gonna look at placements and then feeds. We'll, we'll focus on setup and, and give some tips on how to do setup well. And then uh, post setup, hey, what do you actually do in, in uh, pushing for more and more profitability in that? And we'll look at optimization. So these are the four things. I will warn you ahead of time, there is a, a heck of a lot of things to cover here. And we don't have a ton of time. And so we are going to keep moving and pushing through it. Um, but you should have you know, access to slides. I'll have some links in there for more information. Um, yeah, it should be able to be uh, quite a good time today as we as we look at shopping ads. So, looking at placements, uh, placements is just the fancy uh, word for like where where are the shopping ads showing, right? Like um, uh, more more often than not, then what you're going to see when you refer to shopping ads is that they are appearing on Google or Bing in the SERP result page. SERP is search engine result page in the SERP. Um, and uh, they are generally at the very top now. Google and Bing keep kind of making them bigger and pushing them higher. Um, so they're, they're generally at the top or, or on the right-hand side of things. Or you can also find them in the shopping tab um, on, on Google and then, and then Bing uh, is, is working on that as well here that, that you'll be able to see um, a shopping tab as well in Bing. Um, and then you'll actually be able to see images. Uh, the images tab in Google has, um, has shopping ads as well that, that have begun being worked into those on, in specific things. Um, and another place that you might run into these, so if you're placing these shopping ads through Google AdWords, um, actually there are some partner sites that, that will show shopping ads and like as one, one instance here, Target is one of those sites. So if you go and visit Target, then you will see, oh hey, here's some, here's some shopping ads at the bottom. Um, and that's actually pushed through Google. So you're, you're, uh, you're eligible to show for those um, by, by advertising in Google for shopping ads. So those, those are the placements. Um, nothing too complicated where they're showing. 
uh, now we start to get into a little bit more of the technical aspect, right? So the feeds. So um, when you think of feeds, uh, you think of the fact that um, you need some way to get this product, product information from your database up to the search, the search um, engines, okay? So what Google and Bing are doing is they're taking your product information and then as people, uh, as people search for things, and then they are matching up those queries with the information that you provided. So that's where the feed is just really going to be an, an essential part of your strategy here. And and like what you need to do a feed well is is you have to have some sort of like feed provider or maybe your dev team like someone who knows what they're doing on the back end that they can they can push this information in the specific way and then they push it to something called merchant center that's with Google or Bing um, and at, at this point, you know, we're just talking in terms of I just want you to, to be aware of this stuff, right? Um, even if you're not going to be the one digging in specifically into all this, this, uh, these, you know, real technical details, I think it can be helpful just to know how this works, right? So you have to take this feed, it's going to be pushed up to Google or Bing Merchant Center, and then that's where they process it, and then that's where they disapprove you and your products for you know dumb things, or they say, hey, you know this this works out okay, we'll allow you to advertise this, and then finally that gets linked to AdWords or Bing Ads, and that's where you actually do the the advertising, and, and we'll look at that aspect of it next in the setup. But in terms of the feed, like. What do you, how do you actually get this feed up? Um, there, there are a few different ways to create your feed. So if you uh, are at a small business, you, you know, maybe you have a real small product base, you, you, know, you, have, you have 50 products or, or five products, right? You have a real small team, you're just, you're just getting going. Um, you can actually use just a basic spreadsheet. So like Google Drive um, integrates with, with Google Merchant Center really well, and, and you can update your products that way. Or, or you might be using Shopify or Big Commerce for your 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 website, um, and and actually then there are apps that will uh, in in some ways fairly seamlessly uh, integrate the feed for you and send it to Merchant Center. So there are there are some options even if you're a little smaller. Um, if you're uh, maybe more on kind of an enterprise level, a lot, a lot bigger at least, um, you know, you'll you'll probably have a bigger engineering team. Um, go to them, right? Uh, give them give them some coffee. Start bribing them because you're probably going to need them quite a bit um, as you as you get your feeds uh, ready to to be pushed up. Um, and really kind of anyone in there can use a third party feed provider. So there are lots of options out there. Um, I've used uh, a, a, few, a few of them, including GoData Feed and Feedonomics, both, both are great options. And uh, you know, honestly, feed providers are just they have they have different they have different strengths, different weaknesses, uh, price points, and all that. So you know, definitely do some research, figure out which one is going to be best for your needs. Um, but they can they can take a lot of that that hassle out of building that feed, making sure that it's it's good, optimized, and then push that up for you. In terms of the feed. It's going to include fields, and there are required fields, and there's recommended fields. So we're not going to go through all of these, but you just need to be aware of that. So if there are required fields, then you have to have those fields filled out accurately in order to uh, in, in order to get your your feed approved. Um, if if you if you're running apparel, you actually even have additional requirements then. And then the recommended side of things, um, you know, people often ask, like, how much information should we put in the feed? And and generally, the idea is, hey, the more information you can put in, the the, the better, right? Because again, remember that Google and Bing are 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 taking the information that you have given them and saying, hey, these products match up to these queries. Um, However, to be fair, we're all like super crazy busy and none of us have time to do anything and so like if you only have to focus on a few of them, right, these are probably the four that I would focus on. So get your information added, get as much information added in required and recommended fields as you can and then if you're going to take a little bit of time to to really try to do your feed well, um, at least start with these, these four fields. So um, the the first ones uh, would be title and description. These are these are very very important. They're 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 really used um, 
they're weighted heavily from my understanding in terms of uh, in terms of matching the products with the queries um, uh, one of my one of my good friends uh, Perna uh, she she works at Bing she has said um, to make sure to put your most important keywords in the first 35 characters. That's that's something that she noted. Uh, a, a lot of agencies, a lot of people have done um, quite a bit of research to see that hey, you know, word order does matter in titles. Like getting the right keywords and then and then and then getting them towards the front can be very important. It, it can be hard to know exactly what keywords to use, and so. I've just found benefit in using in using Keyword Planner in AdWords or or other keyword research tools, um, and you know just just as an example, right? Let's uh, moving forward with our Lego Star Wars um, obsession, at least mine. Um, you know, let's say that you're you're running a, a product ad for the Lego Millennium Falcon. And you're just curious to know, hey, can I get any more? Um, can I get any more exposure here? Well, uh, the keyword planner can give you some good insights into maybe trying some different word order, um, maybe maybe um, adding, you know, should you add Star Wars to the front? Should you not? Right? I think that it, it um, keyword planner is by no means this like hard and fast rule in this, but I, I see it as this great way to give you ideas for um, what people are actually searching for, and then to to experiment with titles based on that. In terms of uh, price, then the price is a really, really big deal, and I'll say that, and then and then I acknowledge that like you don't likely control the pricing necessarily. Um, so this is partially then where probably you'll need to get into like how how your company is actually working, the profit on products, maybe having some good conversation with people there too, um, because more and more we're seeing that pricing is just this really, really this really big deal with shopping ads. Um, I've seen it where, you know, I've had traffic remain the same, but all of a sudden like profit kind of dropped off sales and you know you hop in there and see, oh look, your competition had lowered prices and that immediately shot people off of off of your site and, and over to theirs. They did the comparison shopping thing, they looked at all the sites and then they just kept buying the, the cheaper one. So be aware that that is that is a, a very important uh, a very important field. And then images. Um, so if you remember with shopping ad, one, one of the biggest differences in this shopping ad is not just information that it's giving in text, but that there's actually this image now in, in SERPs that you can click on to buy. So people will often ask, like, should I test images, right? And Yes. Okay. I mean, test. Always be testing everything, right? But especially, I think Im testing images is is a good idea. Um, uh, a, a couple things to think through in in that, like. Uh, like when you say testing images, what are you talking about, right? Well, well, one is you know test images that that really maybe stand out, right? Um, you know, standing out can sometimes in SERPs if, if everyone looks the same in this image and yours looks a little bit different, um, you know that that is that that could be a really good thing, although maybe not, right? So test, 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 right? Um, and and the the another another idea there, so not just images that stand out, and and well, one idea on that. That one idea on standing out might be um, testing different uh, product images and model images, and this is what I mean by that here. Um, you know, in this example, you have all these sunglasses, and it's just the product in a white background. Well, then all of a sudden, in 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 there, the hello the Hello Molly um, uh, retailer there, they are showing a model image and. Uh, it, it really stands out, it draws your eyes to it, it draws clicks, that might be a good example of, of one thing to try. So um, uh, back to Perna, so Perna and I presented um, last year at SMX on shopping together, um, and she actually did a presentation in which she, she also talked about image testing quite a bit, and so if you're interested in looking into this more, definitely check out um, her presentation, and, and the link is there. Before we head off of feeds, one last thing I want to want to bring up here are feed rules. And a lot of people don't know about these, but in my opinion, they are probably one of the like the biggest things that Google Merchant Center has done to to improve itself over the last few years. Um, what you can do with feed rules is you can go into a feed without having to talk to or waste money bribing your engineering team. You can go into a feed 
and you can set specific values for products or categories or groups of products and uh, and set those so that you can you can test things so like your you can test titles you can test descriptions right so all of a sudden you have you have the power as the advertiser to run some tests to try to to add in uh, a couple of a couple of words into a title right um, and uh, and so feed rules in Google Merchant Center is is the way that you can do that with kind of minimal minimal upset so definitely one to be aware of so we looked at placements where the ads show and then feeds how to get that product information up um, now let's now let's talk about the actual strategy so uh, now we're moving away from the feed provider and merchant center and now the ads have appeared in in AdWords all right in AdWords or or Bing ads um, and so what do you do with them, right? Um, well, uh, the first rule of strategy for the first rule of setup for strategy with shopping ads is you, you've you've got to not stop at Google and Bing's automation, even if they tell you that you can. Okay, um, so they're gonna say, hey. Our, our system is amazing and we can pull your information and match it to these queries and like money is literally going to rain down from the sky and uh, you know so, sometimes they do a great job with it but there are, there's just always going to be things that you can do um, to, to go beyond their automation and I think probably the single biggest thing would be in setting up a good organized account that allows you to bid well so uh, such a key part of shopping and any advertising but especially with with PPC and shopping ads such a, a, a significant part of that is bidding like pulling things out and bidding um, but not just organizing because like you need something to do today okay so organizing just for organizing is is very evil all right um, you know defeated that okay so so do not organize just for the sake of organizing uh, organize for the sake of bidding and uh, some some thoughts on organization for shopping ads because it is going to be different than normal uh, than normal text ad normal text ad campaigns and search engine marketing um, so uh, one of the thoughts here one of the main thoughts is use the basic product groupings that you already have so someone has already gone to the trouble of like of grouping like things with other like things okay um, even if that you know doesn't always work out exactly right like someone has done that all right so they've grouped product brands and categories together and and stuff like that and um, and so pull those similar products in their normal categories and their normal brands pull those into their individual campaigns so keep keep uh, like products and, and brands grouped together um, uh, and, and that's going to allow you to bid separately on Nike than you do Adidas or, or what have you. Um, but then kind of taking that and kind of going to the next level of that then is, is actually looking at query, uh, at, is actually looking at query bidding. Um, so this is where we're going to get into the weeds a little bit and I'll do my best not to, not to, not to lose you if this is completely new. Um, but I will share some resources that you can dig into this more. But what I mean by this is in, in normal text ad campaigns and normal search ads, you are bidding on a keyword. And a keyword is, uh, a, a, every, like every keyword has its own personal intent to it, right? Which is, which is really powerful. That's why PPC is awesome. Because someone says lightsaber and we think, eh, uh, that's not that valuable of a term, so we're going to assign that a lower bid. And then someone says, I want to buy that lightsaber now, and because they've communicated that personally to you, they've shown their buying intent, you say, hey, that's a great keyword. I'm going to bid higher on that. Well, you can't do that in shopping because you're setting shopping bids according to, like, literally the product itself, okay? So you're, you're bidding according to this product, not according to the, to the keywords anymore. Um, and so what you need to be able to do is you need to literally uh, use campaigns, and there's, there's, there's a specific way to do it. And that's where you're going to have to kind of dig into some of these resources if you're interested. But there is a way to do this where you can start to segment out uh, queries what people are 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 asking for and and group them together to say hey this group of queries has a higher personal intent so we're going to assign a higher value a higher bid in this product um, than than we could have in the past when it was all lumped together all right 
So uh, I actually spoke very specifically on that strategy last year, um, and, and there's a YouTube video on that, and then also uh, uh, an article that I wrote kind of detailing out this, this strategy as well. So if you're, you're interested, please uh, go ahead and, and dig in more to that. Um, uh, another thought in terms of, hey, what are different ways you can organize your account? Just to give you a little bit of a, like open the door a little bit into some, some current things that I'm working on is um, uh, Google and, and Bing allow you to um, segment out your campaigns by device now. So they you know used to do that a long time ago and then and then Google had dropped that and said no, you know, you, you can't do this, you can't segment by device. And then all of a sudden they, they added it back where you could. Um, and, and what we mean by segment by device is to say, um, hey, you know, this campaign is just gonna be for desktops and this campaign then is just gonna be for mobile and this one is just going to be for tablet. And so what you're doing is you're, you're, you're allowing yourself to bid separately depending on the device type because someone on a mobile phone is going to be behaving differently on, than on a desktop. Um, you, you do start to get into a little bit of like overblown accounts, I'll just warn you, especially if you're starting to, to, to build out these complicated like query targeting and device targeting and all this stuff. But um, I, I, like I'm, I'm seeing at least in my my accounts I'm running now. I'm trying this in a few accounts. And I just I just pulled some numbers for a client um, uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, and and so far um, not really changing much else other than this this device uh, segmentation. We we are seeing lower overall cost per per sale, right? CPA, and then overall conversion rate is up. So we've been able to kind of tighten down on on some of that wasted spend. So I do think it's worth pursuing that. One question I'll get a lot in terms of organization is how many products should you have in an ad group? So, um, you know, you have all these different products. Well, should you put all of your Nike shoes in one ad group? Um, and and just to just to make sure we're on the same page here with with AdWords in in um, in shopping and search, it's going to be the same thing. You have campaigns and then you have ad groups. But then after ad group, shopping is going to go to product groups, where in text ads, it's going to go campaign ad group keyword, right? So how many product groups should you have in an ad group? And, you know, honestly, I think the answer depends a little bit. Um, I've found that with, with really small clients and kind of a steady product base, like nothing's changing. You're not having lots of products in and out of stock. I like to put every SKU in, my, in its own ad group, frankly, because then I can I can set very specific bids, and it's a little easier to visualize that, and you can you can see those specific ad groups um, in Google Analytics as well with revenue in that. If you have a really big client, um, like one time uh, I, I spoke on shopping, and then someone came up to me and was was asking me, they're like, "Hey, I, I have." I have like you know millions of products. I'm like, wow, okay. And I looked down at her name tag, and and it said uh, it said Walmart. <laughs> and I was like, oh geez, okay, yeah, you probably you you're probably bigger than the clients that I'm working on currently, right? Um, but but I do think that still the um, I, I I think that the principles are the same, right? Um, really big clients, you can still pull out, uh, I, I think, into like a, an ideal categorization um, into an ad group. And uh, so, so let's say like, hey, Nike flip-flops, all right? Okay, those are in their own ad group. Or maybe Nike flip-flops, $20 to $30 in price, right? I think there are ways that you can smartly categorize products um, where you're not pulling at everything, so you don't have 100 million SKUs um, in 100 million ad groups, right? But then still take your top SKUs. I still think it's worth it to pull those out because you can still use negative query, query uh, negative keywords um, to filter products correctly. And then another question I get all the time is custom labels. And so custom labels are, are an option that you can you can add in your feed where you you base it's like think of custom categories, right? So you're basically saying, hey, we don't have a normal way of categorizing these products, but I want to do something customized, and so I'll throw in this label on certain products. And so like people ask, like, should we use them? Are they awesome? Like. So here, here are my thoughts. All right. So um, I think that I, I think custom labels when they first came out, that everyone like ran to them and it was just like, "Hooray, custom labels! We like customization." 
Um, and I don't really know if they were actually using them to actually increase their, their bidding, right? Um, because uh, again, keep in mind that organization for the organization is, for the sake of organization is evil, right? Um, and so I just, I, I think that um, there are ways to use custom labels. One legit way I've used them is by pulling out different prices of products for certain clients. So all products between $100 and $200, they get a custom label and that kind of thing. And then we can, we can bid according to product pricing. So that I think I think there are ways to use it. Just make sure that it actually is changing what you're doing. Um, so that it, like it make sure it's making your bidding better, not just a, a new way of organization because you got bored. Um, and and then and then a final question here is is what if your account is just huge? We talked about this briefly, but like you're looking at this big account and you're thinking, I, I don't have any idea what I'm about to do with this. Um, and so my first response to that is usually like this half apology, half like, God, gee, I don't know what to tell you, like. Um, laziness is not a good answer, right? I mean, just because you don't want to do work is not a good answer, right? So let's move past that. So so let's say you do want to do work and you want to figure it out, but you're a little overwhelmed. Um, man, time, t like time is on your side in this case. So if you, uh, a lot of times in this scenario, someone says, hey, we're running shopping ads, like they're doing okay, but we want to make them better. My thing is like, take what you have then and slowly build that up. Like think through a solid strategy. You're gonna work on building these brands into the query strategy or maybe you're gonna take this category and this category campaign and you're gonna try device segmentation or something like that and give it some time. Like give it a couple of months. Make sure that things are going well. Don't don't just completely, don't completely blow it up and you'll be surprised after one, two years of faithfully working on this. You'll be surprised how big and complicated your shopping account has has gotten in, in a good way. All right, and then finally, uh, the fourth one here is optimization, all right? So you've, you've added your feed, you've set it up in AdWords. Um, how do you optimize it? Like, like how, do you, how do you do this well? Like, what do you do after the fact? Um, I, I will warn you, if, if we've been moving somewhat moderately fast now, we're really gonna have to pick up speed. And we're, I'm, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna toss out, like I'm gonna lob these like optimization grenades at you, all right? Um, and then any that and any that kind of strike your fancy that uh, interest you, you can, you can go ahead and dig into more. Um, I, I guarantee you there will be other presentations, other, other, um, uh, other other courses even maybe there there's other other posts there's a, a lot of stuff that you can dig into and learn on on the web um, so uh, first first thought here is so your search query reports or your search terms report that uh, here's an example of where this is at least in the older interface um, and uh, I'm I'm officially boycotting the new UI but I I didn't say that publicly but I, I I, I, I much prefer the old UI. But uh, as we are in this, between the old UI and the new UI, the search terms report currently is here in the keyword section. And what that does is that is that shows you, um, hey, these these search terms is what someone are, are what someone has actually typed in to, to see my product, all right? Um, and this is exceptionally helpful with shopping, and it's even more important the more advanced and, and segmented your, your shopping strategies get because a key to all of those is you want, wanting to make sure that the queries are going into the right products, they're going into the right campaigns, and you really need to keep an eye on your search terms report. So just keep that in mind. Um, at, attribution. So, man, what a what a sticky and complicated subject to deal with in, in 45 seconds. And so, um, like an idiot, here I go. I'll jump in. So, attribution is just the idea of like who gets credit for the sale, right? And the thing to remember is that Google Analytics and and a lot of um, uh, analytics providers, their default mode is last click. And so what that means, right, is the last click, um, it might be last non-direct click for, for analytics, but the last, the last click, the last source to send traffic to the site who purchase gets 100% of the sales credit for that. Um, and so 
what that means is as you're looking in analytics and um, for your shopping ads revenue, right, just to compare and see how are these doing, you're going to see this number, but that's last click. And what I've found with shopping is that it, last click is, is like the tip of the iceberg. Um, you, you have, with a comparison shopping engine, you just have a, a normal process that people have of doing research, of clicking on your ads, of going away, of clicking on your ads again probably, like 27 times maybe sometimes, and, and finally deciding, hey, we're finally going to decide for all of these reasons. We've been through organic now. We've been through Facebook. We've, we've, come, we've come 675 times and now we're finally ready to purchase through you know direct or, or whatever the source is um, and and your your shopping ads will you, if in last click if you're comparing that you'll see oh shoot man those those shopping ads had sent no sales and that's where I'm here to tell you it's far more complicated than that so rather than give you like the okay so here's how you solve it I'll just kind of like toss that that uh, attribution grenade at you, let it kind of do its damage, and then I'm going to like back out here by telling you you're you're kind of going to have to figure out what um, what a good attribution model is for your your company, maybe how shopping is I impacting um, other uh, other channels, and and try to figure that out. But the last thing you want to do is look at it and say, oh, it has no effect on it because you're just looking at last click. You shut off your shopping ads, and then all of a sudden, gee, your revenue starts dropping in multiple places because you hadn't realized that shopping was sending a lot of new visitors, but then they were converting elsewhere. So make sure that you keep that in mind. So this next uh, idea for optimization is something that it may be a little bit of a newer concept. Um, uh, ROA, ROAS, very difficult to say, uh, it refers to um, return on ad spend, okay? So it's, it's basically another way of talking about ROI, return on, um, uh, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I messed it up. Sorry. Uh, let's no let's start it again. <laughs> Do it again. That's the beauty of this. Okay. Let's see. Let me get back to it here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Whenever you're ready. All right. All right, so this next one then here uh, is, is a tip for using um, kind of a, one of the automated rules that, that Google provides uh, as, as a bidding option. Um, sometimes their bidding automation uh, needs to be um, uh, it needs to be tested out. It might not always beat what you're doing, especially on, uh, on, on, on smaller accounts. But if you do have a big account and lots of conversions so that the system does have a lot of, of data to use, um, one automated bidding strategy to try is the, the target ROAS bidding. Um, so ROAS is basically return on ad spend, right? So that's, um, uh, you know, what, uh, what percentage of revenue over the ad spend that you're spending um, do you want to shoot for? And, and a lot of times you're, you're, you know, this is where you'll, you'll talk to your clients and, and the, they should have a good idea of saying, hey, you know, we, we want to hit a 300% ROAS or, or, or whatever. So um, target ROAS uh, bidding is, is a great option, like I said, for, for bigger accounts. As one thought, though, I, I will say if you do this, just make sure you are aware of there's like this two to three day period whenever I change my bids um, in, in this setting. <laughs> like whenever I change it from, you know, let's say I change it from 400% to 350% ROAS, um, where all of a sudden you'll see sales like dip. And, and the only thing I can kind of figure is, and I've talked with other advertisers and, and they've noticed the same thing. So I, th I think that it might just be one of those things where the system is literally kind of like writing itself. You, you changed up something in their algorithm and so they're, they're figuring it out they're getting back on board with it and then all of a sudden like it's almost almost like clockwork like two or three days in um, we'll, we'll see our sales pop back up. So if you do experiment with with automated bidding and, and something like that just just be aware of that. Uh, and another optimization tip here and this is probably one of my favorite tips um, is using 
is using custom save filters. So, you know, we're getting kind of technical here into, into the UI of AdWords, but if you're digging around in your product groups, um, the, uh, constantly trying to find, find you know, which ones you should bid on, then uh, any anytime you can do something in bulk is always like the preferred option, right? So, so being able to uh, identify, hey, these products are actually hitting our goals, they're actually doing well, and then you can save that. So you can save that filter, so then anytime in the future that you want to see which products are hitting our goals, uh, you can click that filter, it'll immediately show these products um, that are hitting the goals for that that time period, and 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 then uh, you can you can you know set bids, adjust bids quickly, and it really is is a time saver there. And then finally, last last thought I have here is is another kind of newer initiative I'm looking into, and that is uh, income level targeting. Um, so income level targeting is in your is in is in at least in the old UI. It's in the in the location settings um, of your shopping campaigns. And what this allows you to do is to see um, is basically bid according to the average household income uh, in, within a certain range. And especially if you have products that that tend to, you know, let's say on the on the higher end of products, right, where um, there, there might be some level in at least initially adding these in and keeping them at zero bids, uh, bid modifiers, but then just, just watching and seeing, hey, do the bottom half of income level targeting, um, do they tend to be interested, click on the, on the, on the ads, but then never purchase because you know because because it's a it's a high end product, right? Um, if that's the case, then then you can actually lower your bids just for those those lower uh, the lower tier there as as well. So kind of a, kind of a cool um, thing that uh, has been added somewhat recently um, that is this is definitely worth worth looking into in kind of a more advanced way in shopping ads. So. Those are those are the four aspects of shopping ads. Really, um, we covered where the shopping ads uh, go, uh, how to see them, um, how to get your product information up in the feed, and then what to do in order to take that that product then that that is there and and show that to the right person, um, and then uh, how to continually optimize that and keep pushing for for profit. So. It's been a pleasure. I hope you've learned a lot. Um, I'd, I'd love to connect with you on Twitter at PBC Kirk. Um, otherwise, thanks so much for listening.